Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss about gastric cancer. But specifically we are going to actually talk about the differences between the two types of gastric cancer actually. Number one we have the intestinal type and then we have the diffuse type. So actually for us to uh, actually to talk about this, the differences so let us talk about the risk factors. So what will put a person at risk of developing the gastric cancer itself? So now we are going to see the risk factors and then we are going to see the symptoms actually and the, and the signs. So let us begin. So actually gastric carcinoma, the risk factors for developing gastric carcinomas, risk factors, or sometimes you can even regard them as, as the etiology actually. Actually, number one of the risk factors is taking an excessive uh, amount of healthy food, actually. Salty and smoked food. Also, chronic gastritis. That is long-term inflammation of the gastric mucosa due to any reason. But specifically, most of the, uh, most of the important uh, Positive factor of causing chronic gastritis is actually a kind of Helicobacter pylori. Helicobacter pylori. So this is bacteria is the bacteria in which uh, which 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 causes actually the gastric ulcer. This is the one bacteria that is causing the gastric ulcer actually. So in some cases it may cause chronic gastritis before it causes the ulceration because one of the, the pathogenesis of the developing of the gastric ulcer the gastritis has to occur it is due to the inflammation that the ulceration then develop so at that time we will develop, uh, we will term it as gastric ulcer not uh, gastritis anymore but if the gastritis take long long time actually that's chronic then the person is at high risk of developing this uh, gastric carcinoma actually and then if someone is taking ex an excess of alcohol, alcohol will also put the person at risk of developing this gastric carcinoma. So that is it. Then we are going to see some symptoms. Symptoms of gastric carcinoma. The symptoms of gastric carcinoma, the patient as well with any cancer, the patient will be experiencing a kind of uh, fatigue, weight loss, loss of appetite why will he develop a kind of loss uh, weight loss because if he lost appetite then he cannot eat if he can if he can't eat then definitely he will he will actually lose weight actually right and then the fatigue develop mostly due to anemia so why do a person with cancer not only gastric cancer but almost all the cancers almost all the cancers the person can develop anemia why because all cancers can bleed right so due to this bleeding the person may experience a kind of vomiting vomiting of blood this vomiting of blood is termed as hematemesis hematemesis that is vomiting of blood so due to this vomiting of blood the person will be experiencing a kind of uh, uh, fatigue due to anemia right and also the person will going to be having a kind of tarry stool known as melina why because the bleeding not only will going to be going out through his mouth but also will going to be out going out through his eyes right so whenever the blood from his uh, bleeding cancer goes into the intestine then the blood uh, the blood cells are going to be lysed that are going to be actually oxidized right that's why it will uh, present itself not as fresh blood but it will present as in the stool as black tarry stool known as melina actually so that is it so now we are going to see the two types of carcinoma adenocarcinoma mostly the gastric cancer is adenocarcinoma type so that is it and then the adenocarcinoma adenocarcinoma is divided into intestinal type and then diffuse type 
So that is it. So now we are going to see the difference. So for us to uh, actually simplify the differences, let us do it in, tub in tubular form actually. So if we have the intestinal type, and then we have the diffuse type. So that's it. So there are many factors we use to actually differentiate these two types of gastric cancers. Number one, you have to differentiate them based on age. That is age group mean, that is average, average age, that is average age of the patient affected. Mostly this, uh, the mean age of developing this intestinal uh, carcinoma is actually around 55 years of age. Right? While the diffuse one is actually they develop around 48 years of age. And also the sex of occurrence, that is sex, um, it comes to in terms of sex, this in this intestinal type male are mostly uh, 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 affected with this intestinal carcinoma male are most mostly affected than female to as much as twice that is two ratio one so that is it while the incidence of uh, affecting male and female in the first type is the same that is one ratio one so that is it. And also in chronic gastritis, you can differentiate them based on whether they are associated with chronic gastritis. In intestinal type, definitely it is not associated with chronic gastritis. Uh, it definitely is associated with chronic gastritis, but while in the diffuse type, it is not associated with gastric, uh, uh, chronic gastritis. So that this is associated, strongly associated mostly. Strongly associated. While in diffuse type, mostly it's not associated with uh, chronic gastritis, so not associated. So that is it. And also, most importantly, most importantly, they are also uh, differentiated based on gross appearance and also based on microscopic appearance, actually. So the microscopic appearance is the most important, that is when you take biopsy, because the definite way of diagnosing any cancer or differentiating whether a cancer is malignant or uh, benign or whatsoever is to take biopsy. So you can differentiate them based on gross and then based on uh, microscopy, that's on microscope. So grossly, grossly actually for the intestinal type is actually a kind of exopitic. Exopitic, sometimes sometime it can be fungating. So when we say uh, exophytic or fungating, we mean like this. This is this is the exophytic one. This is that what to say polypoid. So this is the fungating one. So this is the appearance grossly actually. So this is it. So this see the differences. See how this uh, is actually uh, uh, oriented and see this how the fungating tab is actually oriented. While for the Diffuse type, they are mostly ulcerated. They appear as if it is ulceration. So, but it's actually a kind of, not ulcer, but cancer. But ulcerative type mostly. So, this is it. This is how, see the cancer, see the gross actually, but see, it, there is a kind of punch-like defect. That is the ulceration. This is, there is ulceration actually. So, this is the, mostly the diffuse type double, uh, can be, uh, identified based on this ulceration actually and also sometimes it may be infiltrative so but mostly it is ulcerative type that is the for the diffuse actually so for the micro microscopy if you take the biopsy that is on microscope this one these images you are going to see it when you take an endoscopy but this you have to look for microscope right that is if you take a biopsy so if you actually take a biopsy for the intestinal type, most importantly, you will see a kind of intestinal metaplasia. Intestinal metaplasia. So that is it. Because due to that, uh, a kind of insult, 
due to chronic gastritis then the cell will undergo changes from gastric type to intestinal type so you will see this is it this resembles a kind of uh, intestinal epithelium right but they are very very large right so this is it this is the microscopic appearance so this resembles the epithelium of uh, intestine but it is the gastric cancer of stomach this uh, microscopic appearance or the histology of gastric cancer should not definitely look like this right so that is it so, but this is uh, like kind of the gastric cancer but for the intestinal type it resembles uh, the epithelium of intestine that's why it is called intestinal metaplasia because it changed itself from the normal gastric histology to intestine like like that of the intestine that is called the intestinal metaplasia actually and uh, the cells can produce a kind of mucin cells produce mucin using a kind of glycoprotein substance actually so that is it while in this the diffuse type as the name implies diffuse they are not in a cohesive because they are, are not close to each other actually so they are actually diffuse so they are diffuse and then non-cohesive non-cohesive because they are not united to each other and they have a kind of hallmark uh, a feature called a signet ring the hallmark the hallmark of this uh, diffuse type is signet ring formation of this signet ring diffuse type is called signet ring because the cells cytoplasm is filled with mucin to the extent that the uh, uh, the nucleus is shipped or it is pushed toward the periphery of the cell this is other cells they are diffuse right these are the cells they are in a non-cohesive manner actually so this is the cytoplasm of the cell it is filled with this mucin this whitish whitish thing a kind of so it is filled with mucin actually so it is a kind of uh, acidophilic right so this is the mucin inside the cells so you see this is the nucleus it is pushed to the periphery this is also another another one this is another one you see it here it is the nucleus is not in the, in the center but it is pushed to the periphery right so this is another one the nucleus is shifted to the periphery not at the center because the cytoplasm is filled with mucin actually so this is this shifting of the nucleus to the periphery is known as formation of the cell is termed as a uh, signet ring actually so this is very hallmark in the diffuse type of gastric cancer actually so this is the difference between uh, intestinal type and then the diffuse type of adenocarcinoma of the stomach actually. So thank you very much.